I have been sitting here frozen like this for a week waiting to do this episode. Unfortunately, I've had no food supply or water, and I'm weak as heck, and I actually am about to die. Oh, my turn. Okay, Zelda facts, notes. Okay, so naturally I'm just gonna start this. Okay, so uh, first off, uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and go back to more than a year ago when I did the Zelda Effects video and that somehow has gotten us even 5,000 views. Unknown how that possibly happened. Uh, for us, that's really successful, even though 5,000 is pretty darn pathetic. But thank you for those 5,000 views and for more than 75 likes last time I checked. I think that's the most liked video we have. So naturally, since Hyrule Historia released in January and I got it, naturally I'm just going to want to go and do some of my more updated stuff for Zelda effects. And additionally, you know, there was more that I wanted to talk about that I just didn't get to, and this is the sequel. And hopefully it will gain just as much enjoyment as the first one. So I'm just going to start going down the list of uh, facts here. What I've really noticed is that a Link really enjoys sleeping. So I'm going to actually get into Skyward Sword a lot here because Hyrule Historia has a lot of that. You may think that it's sort of advertising it, but it's still interesting and I like the facts. So here we go. In Skyward Sword, Link's Loftwing's color scheme is based off of the colors of the Master Sword, the Triforce, and the crest on the Helian Shield. Is it Helian or Hylian? I'm just going to say whichever I choose to say. Also, Link and Zelda's loft wings actually look a little bit different than the rest of the people's loft wings in the game. I just said loft wings. They actually have a little bit longer fur and a longer wingspan. Somebody is texting me. Josiah Clark. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks! Loft wings are apparently modeled after birds called shoebills. And the idea to have loft wings' tails curl up when they're not airborne was based off of one of the designer's pet Shiba. It is hinted that the harp that Zelda plays in Skyward Sword could possibly be the same one that Sheik plays years and years later in Ocarina of Time, which chronologically does take place a couple of titles later. If you remember the timeline I stated last time, which I will actually speak at the end of this updated, it's also told that the harp once belonged to the goddess Helia, which would make sense because the goddess Helia actually becomes Princess Zelda. I will also get to that in a moment. I just want to add this in right now about Skyward Sword. I hate five. I think enough has been spoken there. I don't think I need to add anything to that. No, shut up! But to uh, add some little information about this annoying freak, Fly's appearance is actually based off of the Fairy Queen from The Wind Waker. If you don't notice, because it is pretty subtle, but what they tried to do was make each student in Skyward Sword look like his or her Loftwing. Okay, this actually blew my freaking mind. It's hinted that the time shift stones in Skyward Sword could be used of the same material as the Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Your face. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why on earth is it daytime when you're talking, but it's nighttime when we're talking? Okay, now just totally skipping to something completely different, not sure if I actually knew this, but apparently people that are not accepted into the Forbidden Forest, which is Kokiri Forest, if they are adults, they become Stafos upon walking into the Forbidden Forest. If you're a kid, then you become a Skull Kid. I should have known this, but Raru is Kepora Gaybora. Kepora Gaybora, if you know what I mean. Uh, no, no, I don't want I don't want to listen to any of that. Ever. Again. Oh, come on! Uh, also, just a side thought, actually. Have you ever thought about, uh, what would life actually be like if people actually talked to you like they did in Zelda? I challenge you uh -huh. to a race! Do you need to know how to race? Yeah. Okay. Use the control stick to go left and right. Cool. If you need to go faster, press and hold A to dash. If you want awesome. to totally piss me off and start before I say start, then press A, B, and Z all at the exact same time. Awesome. Alright? Done. Here we go. Three, two,
Okay, and now just skipping to a link to the past because, I, you know, I'm not really going by chronologically speaking this right now. In a link to the past, Princess Zelda is actually a maiden who is a descendant of one of the seven sages, like Soraya and all of those from Ocarina of Time. And Link is actually of the last two members of the Knights of Hyrule, along with his uncle who ends up dying in the game, if you remember all that crap. Going back to Zelda 2, Adventure of Link, the names of the towns in the games are said to have been named after the seven sages. Raru, Rudo, Soraya, Darunia, and Naburu. Obviously, this means in reality that the developers actually named the sages after the towns because Zelda 2 was developed and released more than 11 years before Ocarina of Time. As many probably know by now, and I freaked out over when I figured this out. The spirit that teaches Link from Twilight Princess all his awesome fancy sexy moves is actually Link, the hero of time from Ocarina of Time, and he is actually an ancestor of Link from Twilight Princess. Going back all the way back to the very beginning, early on Link was actually uh, going to be made right-handed, but to help aid in the development of pixel art and for the purposes of configurations in game screens, they changed it to left hand. From concept art that was revealed from A Link to the Past, it looks like the developers actually tried to do a sci-fi futuristic themed Princess Zelda. That really would have been interesting to watch. I think I remember seeing something about Tingle being based off of Koji Kono, which uh, is honestly a little bit weird, but that's also pretty darn funny. Going to Wind Waker, because you know, I just love jumping around here. Tetra's hair was actually chosen to match the design of the wind and smoke that appear in the game. Jumping to Twilight Princess again, the Light Spirits of Twilight Princess, actually they had done concept art where it actually was human women bodies with animal heads. Also in Twilight Princess, much of the concept art for Ilya actually resembles Navi. Hold on, wait, um, oh, oh, no. Listen, there's a treasure chest right there. Look at that, look at that, look at that, it's a treasure chest. Okay, alright, no kidding, no kidding, no kidding, no kidding. Oh, look, it's coming. Hey, 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 look at that, look at that. Oh, my oh Lord, not you. Where, where, the, where do I, where do I go? Close it, okay, no kidding, okay, shut up, I'm trying to get it to work, I'm trying to get it to work, I'm trying to get it to work. I'm trying to get it to work. I'm trying to get it to work. I'm hey, trying to, hey, hey, look what? over there. You see that? There's nothing. I do need it. Okay. Hey, hey. Oh, wait, it's a woman. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, I get it, I get it. Hey. Are you okay? Are you the sage? Get off hey, me. Hey, listen. No listen, kidding. Look at that, it's a sage. No kidding, oh hey, my gosh. Okay. All right, get off, get off. That's, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, listen. I'm talking to her. No, 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 okay. no, no, listen. There's a freaking oh my. Oh. my compass pointed me to you. I don't know why. It's probably something important. No, it's not! It's a sage! It's a sage! In the early stages of Phantom Hourglass's development, uh, it actually looked like Tinkle had a sibling. Just an overall fact, Link's name is actually because he connects people together. That's why they called him Link. Impa, who in the very first game of The Legend of Zelda feeds info to Zelda, her name comes from the word impart. And before I get to the timeline thing, I would like to state one more fact that I just noticed overall. Zelda is a name that has been just carried on a named after type name for a 
long time now. Princess Zelda's name was named after F. Scott Fitzgerald, the big author who wrote The Great Gatsby. Her name was named after his wife's name, Zelda. Then, later on, the big actor, Robin Williams, which I think I stated this in uh, the Zelda Facts video last time, he named his daughter after Princess Zelda from the game because he really enjoyed the game. So then his daughter's name was Zelda. Both of them ended up being in quite a few commercials advertising Ocarina of Time 3D for the 3DS. So now that I've done all that, I'm now going to give you the updated Hyrule Historian version of the timeline, which is obviously the official Zelda timeline. So first there was the creation of Land and Sky, and uh, I think right before Skyward Sword, as hinted in a manga, there's actually a big war that happens between Link and a whole bunch of other other people with the aid of the goddess Helia and when he gets defeated she has to make herself a human and help save the world somehow that way so then she becomes Princess Zelda from Skyward Sword. Then the establishment of Hyrule Kingdom happened a little bit later on and then the Minish Cap came along and that was the rise of the evil dude Vati. I've never figured out how to say his name. And right after the Minish Cap comes Four Swords and that is the resurrection of Vati. And then the biggie, the era of the Hero of Time which is Ocarina of time, which is the rise of Ganondorf and the first time he really comes into the scene. So if Link is defeated, the decline of Hyrule begins, which starts with a link to the past. So because Link lost to Ganon, Ganon is then sealed away by the seven sages, but he's not dead. He's not defeated. He's just sealed away. So the resurrection of Ganon begins and he gets unsealed basically. Then comes along Oracle of Ages and Seasons. This is once again the resurrection of Ganon after Link defeats him again. Link's Awakening is actually the same Link who goes off on a different adventure and after that adventure his, his whereabouts are unknown. Then the tragedy of Princess Zelda the first which triggers the Legend of Zelda, the very first one, and then right after that the second Zelda adventure of Link. Both where Ganondorf uh, resurrects over and over again after he's defeated. Going back up to Ocarina of Time once again, so in the child era it connects to Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask is practically a direct sequel. Later on after Ganondorf is executed somewhere in the middle Twilight Princess happens where the shadow invasion happens and then Ganondorf comes back and then finally they defeat him But then the reincarnation of Ganondorf comes back in Four Swords Adventures Which is the end of that line so then going all the way back up to Ocarina of Time again Splitting it to the adult era what would happen if you remain an adult and he wins Ganondorf is sealed away and then Wind Waker basically right before that Ganondorf Resurrects and he tries to take over Hyrule, but the king will not have it so he decides that the only way he can seal the way is to flood everything and so then everything go bye-bye and then that's the era of the sea so Ganondorf uh, tries to come back and attack Hyrule again and bring it up and take over it and stuff in the Wind Waker but Link stops it and everything and then it's sealed away forever bye-bye Hyrule done so then after that is Phantom Hourglass that's it, this is just after that. And then a new continent is discovered, and then a new Hyrule is founded, and then comes Spirit Tracks, and that is the end of that line. So, there you have it, there's the timeline. Seriously, actually, you guys should go, I don't want to, like, be ripping off the book, because, you know, there's a lot more that you can get from the book. When I got it, it was only, like, 20 bucks. So you should seriously check it out. This thing is good, you should buy this book. Sponsor. <laughs> So yeah, this is actually practically a special episode since I'm not sitting where I normally am sitting because uh, my clone died. So I'm just going to scratch question of this week. You can just comment on what you think or any extra facts you like that you would like to add in. Also, just on a side note, um, there's this thing called ask.fm. I just created an account. Uh, link in the description below. Just go check that out. Ask me a question if you want to. Also, thanks to Josiah Clark and Tracy Owens for being part of this video. Additionally, Chase, but you know, he's a loser. He's part of the channel anyway, so who cares? Please make sure to go check out Josiah Clark's channel. Channels. He's got billions of billions of them. So yeah, this has been RTTTA, and I leave you with one word. Farewell.